Hello and welcome to Sword of Professional. I'm Matt. And I'm Rich. And today we're going to talk about comics. What should we name this episode? Kind of like, you know, they had the forge, the, the casting. I'm Why just, don't we call this the loudness? We could call it the loudness. I, I was just going to do the casting the same way I called the last episode the forge. Ah, you should be the loudness. The loud casting. The loud casting? Yeah. All people right. Want, people want you to speak up. Right, Dave? Hi, Dave. <laughs> I don't know Dave. Say hi to him. Hi, Dave. See? He listens. We still don't know. I still don't know you. He's nice. I'm sure he is. He's a fan. you got to be nice to him. <laughs> Since when? Because he posts, he posts our um, Buzzsprout. Oh, does he? Yeah. Nice. Uh, I gotta... Dave just got married. Oh, congratulations, Dave. Matt's reaching for a book. Three of them. Even. So you went and got more books. I did. Where are they? It, they weren't. I, they weren't comic books. They were graphic novels. Those are comics. Yeah. Well, actually, technically, they're trades. <clears throat> I never understood that term. Uh, graphic novels are. You're not trading me anything. Well, right. That's true. <laughs> uh, I like. And they're not paperback when they first printed either. They're hardback. Yeah. So their name makes no sense. Well, there's, so from now on, I want you to call me Gorgeous Ricardo. There's trade paperbacks, and then there's trade hardcovers. No, there's no trade hardcovers. Yes, there are. That's a, that's if a you term. ask. If you ask my comic book database, there are trade. That's hardcovers. a term that was made up after someone like me brought up the fact that they're not trades and they're not paperbacks. Well, it's a term now, mm-hmm. so therefore there is that term. Yeah, mm. They add things to the dictionary Game all the time, and match. like Bay. Oh my God! Don't even get me started on oh, Bay. Cray cray, cray cray. I think, thankfully, that term has died down in popularity. It'll come back. Everything comes back. That's true. I thought people I've, would stop saying, like, you know, like, 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 and now that's back, too. I've heard the term cool cat. Cool cat? Yeah, recently. Like, you're one cool cat. So Hulk Hogan terms are coming back. Uh, that was a term before Hulk Hogan. He made it famous. The dude and brother. Not really. Hulk Hogan's more famous than the term cool cat. Unless Top Cat had it, because Top there Cat was There were around. more famous people than Hulk Hogan that used that term. <laughs> Name one. Um, exactly. <laughs> it, if I'm correct, it was a blues thing. Yeah, because there's a lot of blues fans out there. Well, maybe you meant St. Louis blues. It doesn't matter that there's a lot of if there's a lot of blues fans. <laughs> there's not a lot of opera fans. I'm an opera fan. I can yeah. sing opera on key. Right. Please don't. I could. Please don't. I, I have the headphones on right Thankfully now. Thankfully for you, I can't because of my voice problem that I'm having. Mm. But once I get that fixed, I'll belt out some opera for you. I also do a wicked monkey. <laughs> I do. Now I have a monkey song stuck in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I. Okay, controversial opinion here. I'd rather listen to the monkeys than the Beatles. Here's something that'll blow everybody's mind. I've never listened to the Beatles once, and I'm never going to listen to them ever. I don't like their music. I do like the Blue Meanie, though. Okay. (laughs) Only because he spawned off a wrestler. (laughs) You would like it for that. I do. Wrestling's my guilty pleasure. Well, all this music talk is very interesting. It is. I'm trying to clean my glasses, and so. frankly, can lead us to the book that we're really here to talk about. This doesn't have to be a forty-minute episode where we talk about every book. That so came we're going to talk about the death of Bizarro. Yes, that is undoubtedly the biggest book, most important book that came out from DC. My this Little Pony week. came out this week too, if I'm not mistaken. Did you read it? I don't get My Little Pony for personal reasons. <laughs> you don't want everybody to know you're a brony. I would not. Ne- have you ever met a brony? I have not actually. This is. N- you know something? I was going to do that whole no disrespect thing that you do to people when you're about to insult them. But bronies are nuts. They make Star Wars fans look absolutely sane. That's tough to do. Yes. Because Star Wars fans are crazy. <clears throat> they are. And they're crazy for details. And bronies are twice as crazy. Really? Yeah. Cause I I've sat met, next to a bunch of bronies I've at a met Transformers a lot of, show. Figure that one out. I've met a lot of Star Wars fans. And their, their attention to detail... And their tenacity about sticking to it is... Bronies are worse. I, I, that 
Like, I got one of the ponies' names wrong, and the guy went on, like, a half-hour thing telling me how I could tell the difference between Applejack and the pink one. I can't even remember her name. I'm surprised you remembered Applejack. Only because I, I had to draw her for a test. Uh, that wasn't fun. Did you pass? Nope. Oh. Well, that's too bad. Hasbro was like, eh! <laughs> You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Hey, that lady. She got famous for nothing. My headphone cord's all tangled up here. Well, you should stop doing Pilates while you're recording the show. I have to give everybody a visual. What does that have to do with my headphone cord? You got it wrapped around you. Okay. <laughs> all right. I, don't, I was going to mention what to say about that, Rich. I was going to mention something about okay. the forge and the casting, yeah. and because I just put that mental image of you doing Pilates with the headset on, mm-hmm. it's gone. Really? Yep. Wow. That's... I went to Albuquerque. To Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. Everybody picks Albuquerque because that's where Bugs Bunny was going. Yeah. He never did get there. Weird Al had a whole song about it. It's like thirteen minutes long. It's a good song. Yeah. Running with scissors. I have that song. Yeah. I don't think I've ever listened to it. Uh, we're actually talking about the casting, if we haven't made that clear. That's the important book that came out this week. It's good. It is good. Yeah, it's uh, next on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned yesterday it's definitely a, a, a book that I'll have to reread along with The Forge. Uh, because there's... it's. I heard somebody call it an info dump. Info dump. And that's really what it is. It's like he's just dumping everything on you right now so he can get it out of the way. I remembered what I th- I reread The Forge yesterday. Oh, yeah? And I realized that we had the Plastic Man scene wrong. Did we? Plastic Man's not what's hidden in the room. It's what's hidden inside Plastic Man. Kind of like he got the dagger from Talia. Oh, okay. Plastic Man has one of those artifacts so, inside of him. Plastic Man is a case, essentially. Yes, he made himself a plastic egg. Took a, it, and it took me a few times to read that, but I finally got it. Yeah. So that's what Mr. Terrific was guarding, because Plastic Man couldn't defend himself. Right, yeah. Thank God, because I did not want what? Plastic Man to be an ultimate hero. What do you have to do to convince Plastic Man to just spend years of his life as an egg? I think if Batman asks, you just do it. Because if you've seen any interaction between Plastic Man and Batman... Plastic Man is a fanboy. <laughs> um, Why did you look strangely at me there when I said that? No, there was just a, a strange noise coming through the headphones for a second there. I wasn't sure what it was. <clears throat> it might have been me disguising my burp as a word. No, it was, <laughs> it was a, an electronic noise. Oh. So. I'll turn the vibrator off. Yeah, please do. I don't know why you insist on using that every time I'm here. Relaxes me. Okay. And because of that, there was something I wanted to say about Scott Snyder. And now it just went to Albuquerque. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, I heard somebody say that they were sick and tired of the the Batman who has a plan for everything and always wins and is just good. A little like Batman in general. Well, yeah, there's that. (laughs) But there's also... At least this was my reading of it. That's completely not what Scott Snyder's Batman was. Scott Snyder's Batman lost a lot. Now, I think I think what he was trying to say is he was always tired of like the, you know, Batman had this device that you ne- nobody ever knew about before. He basically just pulled it out of his ass that let him end up winning even though he lost. I do that quite often. Um, so I think that's what he was talking about. But Scott Snyder Batman was not really Bat God Batman. I can officially say that the world has killed their imagination. <laughs> like some guy was complaining about the Joker surviving that fall and death of the family. The Joker has survived a lot of falls. I'm like, dude, it's a fucking cartoon. Yeah. Like <laughs> they didn't throw a guy a white guy <laughs> off of a cliff and say, Did you survive? I would like to know where his pants went though. Uh, he probably pull them off on the way down. So if you were falling to your death, you'd take all your clothes off? Well, I imagine it makes you more aerodynamic. I wouldn't. I think your nuts and your dick would rip right off. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. 
<laughs> if we want to be scientific. Well, hang correct. on. We only saw his ass. We don't know that his nuts and dick are still there. According to Harley, they're still there. That's how she knew that the fake Joker in her book was not the Joker. Um, Nuts and Dick just kind of threw you off your game there. Yeah, a little bit. And I'm, I'm trying to think about what to say about this book. I still haven't read any of the Hawkman parts. Really? Because <laughs> those are kind of important. I don't care. I just want to. I do it all the time with these event books. I did it with Convergence. So like the first couple of issues that I bought, I just read the Batman parts <laughs> and the Green Lantern parts. And it just so happens that Batman and Green Lantern are together. If Superman was in there, I would have read the Superman parts too. <laughs> Superman's kind of become like the lumbering oaf of the DC universe. He's just there to punch people and go home in, to his family. In other people's books, yeah. I mean, in his books, he's... He can't even figure out how to be a father. He's a father fine. He doesn't think so. A lot of fathers don't think they're good fathers, even though they are. Oh, that's cute that you think Clark's a good father. <laughs> so go ahead. What do you want to say about the book? Um, I still don't like Duke. He's not Duke anymore. He's the Signal. He's still Duke. He's the Signal. Duke was. It's not like Duke was his superhero name, name and it's re- and it's changed with. To the signal. I don't like that his name's Duke because it makes me think of G.I. Joe. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I don't like that once again it's shoved in our face that Duke is super important, guys. <laughs> the Joker does kind of make it sound like like uh, they're purposely shoving it in our face, too. Yeah. He's like, make sure you read this. <laughs> the Batman knew all along. I guess that explains why he had a weird suit just made in his uh, cave already. Maybe. Batman does have a contingency plan for everything. Yeah, that's kind of... It's gotten him in trouble before. Well, if he just used that stupid globe in Detective, none of this would happen. He didn't know about the globe. Does now. He does now. He could use it, find out who did all this shit. And Zatanna could just say their name backwards, like we said yesterday. (laughs) And Dr. Manhattan is gone. I don't think Dr. Manhattan has anything to do with the metal. She could just reset the universe. She could just say they post. Made her, they made her seem very, very powerful. She could say pre-crisis backwards, and everything will be good. But which crisis? That's true. I'm not thrilled about the new characters, the new books. Although when people say crisis, it's usually uh, crisis on infinite earth. Uh, there's been so many crises now that I don't even remember which one came first, which one was last. Really? Yep. It's not that tough to remember. It's all, in my mind, it's all one big time. So, see, here's the problem is you think of every event as a crisis. Every event is a crisis. No, there's only three crises. No. Crises. Yeah. And you read too much into stuff. No, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> I just read if my books ask, and enjoy them. If you ask DC, they will say there are only three crises, which I think is the no. plural for all. Let me get on the crisis. phone and I'll ask them. Yeah. <laughs> Go I ahead. Pro- I actually could. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure about a lot of things, but I'm a hundred percent sure about that. I could get on the phone and call t- too, and I'm a hundred percent confident about that. I don't know if he'd pick up right now, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. He'd be pretty mad if I put him on the spot. I think it's after of, business hours. He'd still be pretty mad if I put him on the spot in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to give expertise now. I'll use my Batman for my interrogation voice. Yeah, it's, it's more polite to give him warning. I just don't care. I just read books, and they go into a box. I do care. That's the way I am about everything, though. Yeah, you care. That's why I don't get invested in a lot of TV shows. You care too much. I don't know that it's caring too much. Like, I don't lose sleep over shit. I don't, you know... I'm surprised you didn't lose sleep over Tim's death. I Almost. It was close. But he was still alive, so that kind of... I wish they had not put that page in so I could deal with you for two weeks. There would have been some ranting and raving on the show. I can guarantee that. He's going to die anyway. No, he's not. He's not going to be Robin anymore. He hasn't been Robin for years. Oh, that's right. He's Red Robin. Yeah. And actually, if you ask New 52, he was never Robin. It wasn't even Tim Drake. Although... That was his name that they gave him. Yeah, right? (laughs) Ugh. Don't get me going. You love it. Don't get me going. 
I almost went on a Twitter rant about this. So what is uh what made this book so great? Because we haven't really told anybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd say it was the art, uh, because there is some really really good art in there. There's some really bad art in there too. Yeah, um, but. It's, the way the story's told maybe is I, perfect. Maybe I like it because it's an info dump. You just use that term because you heard it on the internet. And it's a good term to use. <clears throat> I, I, like, I like very involved stories. And this story is shaping up to be very, very involved. Um, I like... Cosmic. I'm looking forward to metal. Hmm? I'm looking forward to metal. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll read the hell out of metal. How do you read the hell out of something? Uh, basically, you read it so much it falls apart. I don't think I've ever done that. I have watched Spaceballs enough to have to replace the, the VHS. Have you ever heard of uh, Good Omens? It's a book by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. No. Uh, Neil Gaiman is the writer of the Castlevania series. Really? Yes. Did not know that. Might watch it now. And the guy that was Thor in Oakenshield is the voice... Of um, now I can't remember his name. Okay, I the might, Belmont. I might not watch it now. Oh, he's excellent. Okay, because he wasn't in the Hobbit. Once again, your opinion. <laughs> when it comes to that stuff, now I just go, <laughs> "Yep." Um, <laughs> what the hell was I saying? Something about you like in-depth you stories, me. and then I went off on a little bit of a side thing about Castlevania because you said something about Neil Gaiman. Oh yeah, basically I read that I read that book until it fell apart on me. I still so have my original copy of Killing Joke. It didn't fall apart. Uh, I no longer have my original copy of The Long Halloween. I didn't like that story, but that's mostly because it was poorly bound. It was. <laughs> I didn't like that story. I sold it when it got high. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hang on. The price got high. Yeah. Or you got high. I'd never been high in my life. Okay. Drunk, yes. High, no. Mm. Sometimes I think about it, though. Yeah? Yeah. There's a difference, big difference between thinking about it and doing it. One day. One day? One day. I'll experience it. Okay. And then... I probably won't. I probably won't like it and not do it again. That's pretty much how it goes. If I got high on any kind of drug, it would be a psychedelic. That'd be cool. Yeah. You can see, like, Batman really here. Yeah. Like, like oh. You know, give peyote a shot. Peyote? Yeah. What are you, a Native American? Yeah, because it's only Native Americans that use peyote. I, I grew up with cowboys and Indians. Excuse me, but it's hippies. Hippies? New Age hippies that use peyote. Ugh, <sighs> hippies. <laughs> I let out a Krusty the Clown uh, sigh there. Ugh. <sighs> I enjoyed the, the casting, yeah. I st- but I, I probably won't read the Hawkman parts. I'm not even getting the Hawkman book. Uh, well, I think I, I think I done. Did, was it last week I mentioned this? Where I, I'm stupid enough to get everything. Well, at our comic book store, Player's Choice, they uh, they were laughing because I've got the list that Greg Capullo put out on Twitter, and I mm-hmm. checked off what I wanted, yeah. and there was only five books that I didn't get. It was like Nightwing, Teen Titans. Um, Hawkman and like two other books <laughs> well I imagine that being kind of Batman titles because they both have Batman characters in them Nightwing and Teen Titans might be a bit more to do with the story than I figured if worse comes to worse I'll look at yours when you bring them over yeah. and if I feel like I want them I'll tell them to get them for me Okay. Got to draw the line somewhere. I uh, hate. I also I didn't realize what. that metal was going to go all the way until February of next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think uh, Doomsday Clock starts during metal. So that's two events going at once. Anytime you can bring back Doomsday and Asriel and Cool Joker, they got my money. And Tim Drake. Yeah. That's not till September, right? Yeah, I know. Well, July's almost over. Then August will fly it's, by. It's not over enough. And oh. that has nothing to do with Tim Drake coming back. 
And August will fly by. That's everything to do with work. And then September will be here, and you'll be thoroughly disappointed because Tim will come back and then oh. he'll quit. Oh, I have a, I have a speech planned out for if even his return is disappointing. No, stop it. No, I, I have, I, I seriously, it's, I have it written down. Well, I feel bad for you because we both thought that Joker's return was going to be disappointing, and it hasn't been. <laughs> So I, I, I want your favorite character to come back in a way that you're happy with. Did I think that? Yeah. You agree with me. It was probably going to be something stupid. Never did we think that he'd be the good guy in the book. <laughs> he was trying to be the good guy at least once. I screamed really loud when I turned the page when Hal was flying the plane at him. and It was that stupid Superman Flash Snickers comic. Oh my god. And yeah. I'm like, if the Joker's dead on the next page, I'm going to be really unhappy. I hate that <clears throat> ad because it gets me every time. Me I'll start reading it like it's part of the comic. Someone at DC right now is going, hee hee hee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it so much. But uh, I thought the Joker was going to be like cut in half. Yeah. But I don't know, all of a sudden Hal had him in like a big claw. How do you get out of it too? I don't know. I need to learn how he escapes things. <laughs> Joker magic. That's what it is. He still did my favorite thing by putting himself in all those classic photos. That was genius. That was so cool. That was my favorite part of Endgame. (laughs) So, are we done talking about the casting? I think we are. We didn't even mention Hal Jordan or Duke. I mentioned that I don't like Duke. Do you like Hal Jordan? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, this is still comics. Uh, you hear about? Did you see the thing about Green Lantern Earth One? I saw you posted it, and I never yeah. got the chance to go back and read it. Uh, basically, in it, <coughs> uh, Hale is going to be not a test pilot, but an astronaut. Uh, also, like an Elseworlds book. Yeah. Also, a scientist, and uh, you're just like apparently very like smart scientifically and shit like that. So he's not going to be Hal Jordan. That's what I said. They said, oh, we're trying to stay stay true to the core of Hal Jordan by him, making him not Hal Jordan. Mm, That's essentially what they're saying. Just like I'm still not sure I'm going to get that uh, Batman comic where he's the bad guy and the Joker's the good guy. Oh, I'll, I'll read it to see what it's all about, but it might still be good. I mean, I don't care if Batman's a bad guy. It's just not something that interests me. It's some. It's something that's it's somehow like said, Batman's always the bad guy anyway. It's not a new. It's not a new thing. They've done the Joker being the good guy and Batman being the bad guy before. Uh, but th- I would like to. I would like to do something eventually. Maybe I'll have a talk with somebody else about Batman being a fascist. And how there's people that love writing him as a fascist and love talking about him being a fascist. And I don't know that I agree. Could he be a fascist? Yes. But is he? No. I don't think so. I've never, ever thought about that ever in my life. <laughs> it's not, I, have thought, I have thought about it. <laughs> I've never even put those pieces. If they came in the puzzle box, they just stayed in the box. All right. Those are like the Joker cards and a like deck of cards. So it won't be you I'm talking about this with, then? You could talk to me about it. I'll have to do some research and find out when Batman was a oh, fascist. I'm going to have to do research, too. Oh, well, he was a, he was a fascist in Kingdom Come. Um, Kingdom Come, I know. I, Joker. Although that was more of a cult of Batman. Because it was, like, far-flung future. Um, obviously, the Justice Lords universe... Uh, from Justice League. I didn't... Well, he was a little different. Uh, I don't know. Off the top of my head right now, I, I, it's tough to call him out, but there have been... We have my new nickname for you that I'm going to call you. I decided just now. Oh, Your name's going to be Cinnamon Grumpy. No. No. Yep. I will not respond to it. That's what, I laugh so hard. You'll be talking to Thin Air. I'll just let that go. Um, <laughs> I laughed so hard at that in that book. In the Red Hood and in the Outlaws book. Yeah. That Bizarro, he making me cry. I like the cover. Me too. The reverse Death of Superman. It's just the same thing that they, you know. But I like it. It's a, it's a nice cover. 
What else did you get this week besides detective? Uh, action. That I didn't read because I'm not really into this whole Superman Revenge Squad thing. So you didn't find out what happened? A uh, bunch of them got sent to the Phantom Zone, I know that. He sent all of them, uh, except for, Supergirl. like, Mongol and, you know, the, the normal villains. But Cyborg Superman and Eradicator are there, yeah. too. Uh, Supergirl apparently is not there. Uh, and yes, John. she is. He sends all of them, because John and Lois are the only ones that escape. I'm listening to this secondhand. So. Oh, Who told you that? I don't want to give you their name. Is it Rob? No. Was it Dr. DC? <laughs> Rob read comics. That's funny. Rob doesn't read comics? Rob will read a comic when it comes out in trade. I know a lot of people like that. Yeah. He likes the whole story at once. Yep. Which I understand. I think a lot of stories are better uh, uh, all at once. Yeah, Supergirl's there. It's Lois and John the only ones that escape. All right. Kellex gets annihilated. So are they going to find mon in the Phantom Zone? I hope not. Or what about Christopher Kent? Remember him? No, I don't know who Christopher Kent is. He was from uh, Jeff Johns' Action Comics run with uh, Richard Donner. No, but I bet you they find con That would be nice. Bring him back. Because I do think he's going to come back. And the same thing with Bart Allen. And that's where Tim's going to go. I don't want to. I don't want to get into this. I think we're not. We're going to get. You remember how we used to have Young Justice? Yep. I think they're going to make that another team, but it'll just have a different name. Yeah. Why? Give because that was. I would buy it because I bought all those series. Give it the name. Well, they're not young anymore. They can well, call them Teenage Justice. Tim is. Well, I guess, yeah, Tim is. <laughs> how old is Tim in the books? I can't even remember. He varies in age depending yeah. upon depending who's, who's writing, writing it. Yeah. <laughs> and who's drawing it. Well, Con- if Con- if Connor comes back, that's he'll be the only one not aged because he'd be in the Phantom Zone. Well, there's also <clears throat> he was only what like five by the end of yeah. I liked him. Everybody hated him. I liked him. I liked him. I don't know why everybody hated him. I mean, I hated the whole thing where he shaved his head and became Lex Luthor's clone for a little while. Well, he was Lex Luthor's clone. I think you mean he was basically mind controlled. That was when he was yeah. mind controlled by Luthor. But and That was only like half an issue. And he was great in Titans until they ruined that book. Oh yeah, they really <laughs> they really ruined that book. Uh, Jeff Johns left and it took a steep dive. Yep. Um, you want I, to talk about the tech? I did like, uh, what was it, Kid Devil? Yeah. I liked him. The Blue Devil Kid? Yeah. Yeah. That whole book was good. It opened up. That's where, you, like, I think uh, the Young Justice cartoon. They got the premise for that from. Yeah, I'm bet you they'll move that Aqualad to that team too. Probably, I would. He'd be better off there. Probably, I'd buy that book. Yeah, you listen, DC. You want to make some money? <laughs> and um, Robin, Red. I'm sorry, Red Robin needs to be just a Robin. <laughs> I don't like the double R. He's not a railroad. Just. Give him his pre-New 52 Red Robin costume. He kind of has that, just with the weird no, logo. Doesn't. It's green and red and No, he and has his pre-New 52 Robin costume. Yeah. it's not, I'm talking the Red Robin costume. with the. Oh, uh, I don't like that I one. I love that costume. That one's already been done. Um, it just to me, it always looked like a red Batman with no ears. <laughs> I think that was deliberate. Yeah, uh, he's better off with the, the green tights and the... That's what I just see him as. Okay. I hated the bird outfit from oh New Fifty Two. Oh my god! When they first when they first showed showed off the redesign of that, I swear he had you know when you would lift up his arm and you'd have the feathers underneath there. I swear those were rainbow. When when I first saw that when I first saw the design, it was a rainbow. Nah. Yeah. I don't ever. I remember being yellow. It's t- it'll probably be tough for me to find a picture of it if it exists. If it exists. It wasn't in your mind, but I would swear that that was a rainbow. <clears throat> or maybe I, you know, maybe I just thought that the that the redesign looked really gay. That's a possibility. Who do you think, Detective? Uh, you have two stories going on in one book. It's finally an Azrael story. I think they should have split it. One issue, like the Wonder Woman, one issue be Batman yeah, and Zatanna, maybe. and then the other issue should have been about Azrael and the maybe. other guys. Because frankly, right now, I'm more interested in the Batman Zatanna stuff. 
Um, I like both stories, but that's because I'm an Asriel. Yeah, you like Asriel. Always have. I. It's not that I dislike Asriel. I just find it difficult to care about him. I, I don't like all the religious stuff. And I do tend, when the priest guy is talking, I kind of just, my mind just kind of goes other places. You, you Hawkman it? Yeah, I Hawkman it. That's going to be my term from now on. I Hawkman it. Uh, I, uh, it's funny, I like Hawkman. Yeah. But I can never read his comics. I find them boring. <laughs> I like the look of Hawkman, though. I don't know, one of these days I'll have to find, I'll have to see if I can find uh, the Jeff Johns, <clears throat> Hawkman and Adam, collected. I keep meaning to look for it, but I just... I have, is that the Rain Thanagar? Um, I'm not sure. Ivan Rice? I'm pretty sure he was the artist for it. Yeah. That's the Rain Thanagar. I have the first two issues, and then we moved. I never put the other <laughs> ones. But, do you know, Detective Comics is good. Detective Comics has been good, yeah. though. It's, consi- it, it's at least consistent. I want to know what happened to all the artists. That that were on the book though they just vanished like Eddie Barrows he was on the book <laughs> like where'd he go I don't know <laughs> like did he have to take a break uh, he's been gone for a long time actually is he the one working on the Nightwing book where that Kyle Higgins is doing I don't know I can't remember who's who's doing the art on that book that might be why he's not there though should have kept him on just like Green Lantern, I know everybody's happy that also Hal Jordan, that Ethan Van Skyver is back. But I was enjoying Sandoville, the guy who was drawing it before that, much more because it was different. It's not that I dislike uh, Van, Sh- Van Skyver, mm-hmm. uh, because I don't. Um, but he's just never been one of my favorite artists. He lives in Charlotte. Are you really? Um, but I, and I like Green Lantern Rebirth, still one of my favorite books. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's straighter lines. As odd as that sounds, he has uh, I don't know, some people I think are crazy. Frank quietly faces. Well, they all look like they're making kissy he, faces. He does. Yeah, that's that is, that is, <laughs> that's something that he does. Yeah. They all go, hmm. <laughs> Even Guy Gardner. But Hal Jordan, that came out this week. It was good. Yeah. Tomar II was a murderer. He's been exiled and going to be put on. Now the Snestra Corps wants to kill him. So they're going to bring in Tomar III to replace him? <laughs> it's not to the number. He's Tomar Ray's son. Mm. <clears throat> and then Sorin- uh, Sorinak? Yeah, that's her name. I can never say her name right because it's like too many K's and. R's and I's together. Yep. And uh, her and Kyle, she just branded him on his chest because Sarko, the bad guy, they found out was their son from the future, but he didn't tell her. So she burned the Sinestro Corps logo into his chest. I want to say he's been branded more than once, Kyle. No, this is the first. I want to say it happened in Omega Men, too. She I have to beat him up it. while he was drawing. It's kind of a dick, dick move. move. Dick move. Is he Ion? He was. What is he now? He's a Green Lantern. Just a Green Lantern again? He demoted himself down to a Green Lantern. Okay. He made it up to White Lantern. And then he was like, no, I'll just be Hal and John's bitch. (laughs) Yeah, well, we talked about action action comics, yeah. So we're going to talk about the big elephant in the room. What's the big elephant in the room? Spider-Man. The movie. Oh, that's next episode. Uh, we'll talk about it on this episode. Well, you're going to have to wait. It's a big elephant. It's a big matzo ball. It is a big matzo ball. Um, yeah, I got that's X-Men books, but I didn't get to read them yet. Eh, well, that's too bad. I don't know. I thought about getting Wolverine and the X-Men. The Jason Aaron book. It's old. I know it's old. But I thought about getting it. See if it's any good. Do we really need the Wolverine in the beginning? It's still just the X Men. Alright. <laughs> I don't know. 
X Men Blue. Well, there was the car. You remember the cartoon Wolverine, uh, Wolverine and the X Men? Mm-hmm. That was actually a good cartoon, but I only had what ten episodes. I got Disney. Yeah, I liked that show, and I would have kept watching it. Got Disney because it. I had a feeling they were going for more Nightcrawler eventually. Well, Apocalypse was supposed to come into it too, at the end. But uh, I, I'm always up for more Nightcrawler. Whenever I see the Age of Apocalypse at the end of an X Men cartoon, I know there's no more seasons to come up. <laughs> yeah, well, it's almost it's almost like uh, the Dark Phoenix. It's tough to uh, tough to top it as far as spectacle. The first X Men cartoon did the Dark Phoenix saga. Okay. Apparently, the Jean Grey book is her trying to fi- like Dark Phoenix is coming back, and she's the trying legacy to, books. She's trying re- to figure out how to beat. They Dark originally Phoenix. said that they weren't going to be flashback books, and now they're all flashback books. Mel was telling me the solicits say that they're flashback books. I don't know. Hi, Mel. Hi, Mel. Mel helped me out this week. I gotta do some artwork for her. I almost wouldn't have had a copy of the casting without her. You need to start ordering like I do. A couple weeks in advance. Well, there's a funny story behind it, but I don't want to tell it on the podcast. You already told me a story. Did I? Yeah, on the ride to the movie. That's right, I did. That's right. Did you forget it yesterday already? I wish I could forget yesterday. All right. I think (laughs) it's time to to wrap this up. Yeah, I got to go check on my dog anyway. (laughs) All right, folks. I hope you enjoyed our little talk there. Because I'm going to keep doing this, uh, this episode at least. Uh, What what does that even mean? There's always going to be a comics episode. No shit. It's a comic podcast. Well, we don't have to do an episode about the comics that came out. We could just talk comics in general, but we're not. We're going to talk about the comics that came out every week. Why? Why not? I don't know. We could change things up. I enjoy doing it. We could, but we could still talk about the comics that came out for the week and other comics in general like we normally do. I tell you what. <laughs> if you stop enjoying it and if I stop enjoying it, then we'll stop doing it. Well, I guess we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. I enjoy it. All right, folks. Why are you staring at That's me? Been Stop looking episode. at me. Because I've been, I'm sorry, I've been <laughs> taught that it's polite to look at people when you're talking to them. I'm not, you don't have to be polite with me. If you want to look at the floor, you can. Okay. <laughs> well, folks, that's. He's tried to end the show three times. That's it for this episode. Hopefully. Mm, all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm Hondo. And this has been Sort of Professional. See y'all later.